Hi guys, welcome back to another tutorial. By the end of it, you will have a functional main menu for your game. Without further ado, let's get started. This is a blank Unity project, so if you already have a scene for your game, skip to the timestamp on the screen to get right into creating the menu. As I don't, I will rename this sample scene and call it my game scene. To this, I will add a text component and write game scene. This is just that we have something to see when we start the game. Now make another scene and call it the main menu scene. Open it up, right click and go to UI panel. This will create a canvas with a panel as a child object. Go to the canvas and set the UI scale mode to scale with screen size. Set the screen size to be 960 by 540 pixels. Next, click on the panel again. I'm going to change the colour to a more blue colour. Something like that looks pretty good. And then I'll duplicate it twice. I'm going to rename these to Main Panel, Instructions Panel, and Options Panel. Select the Options and Instructions Panel and deactivate them. Next, go to Window, Package Manager. Search for Text Mesh Pro and install it. I have already installed this package, so I'll just close out of it. Right click on the main panel, go to UI, Text Mesh Pro. If you get a pop up asking you to install or import the Text Mesh Pro package, click the button and wait for it to load. I'm going to rename this to Play Button and change the size to 400 by 75 pixels. Right now, it is only a text element so you can't actually interact with it when you press play. To fix this, scroll down to add component and add a button component. I'm going to change the colours of the highlighted and the press colours just so that we can see it a little bit better. Next, I'm going to change the text to say play. I also don't really like this white colour. I'm going to change the text colour to a more golden colour. Something like that looks pretty good. I'm also going to change the font size to 50 and center the text. Duplicate the button three times and change the text of each of them to be instructions, options, and quick. I'm also going to name them accordingly, so instructions button. Options button and Quit button. Now let's click on the Play button again and change the font size to 125, the width to 500, and the height to 150 to accommodate for the larger text size. This is just to make it stand out a bit more as it's the button we want the players to click. I'm going to reposition the buttons now just so that they aren't all stacked on top of each other. And something like that looks pretty good. Finally, it's time to write the main menu code. So go to Assets, create a new folder, let's call this Scripts. Then in there, I'm going to go create new C Sharp script and call this main menu. Once that loads, I'll open it up in Visual Studio. The first thing we'll do is add our variables. We're going to need a serialized field, game object, main panel. Duplicate this line two times and rename them to the instructions panel and options panel. The serialized field modifier just allows us to assign the variables default values in the inspector. To check this, let's head over back to the editor, create a new empty game object. I'm going to call this main menu manager and to it I will add our main menu script. In here, we can see three blank fields under it, each corresponding to one of the variables we just made. We can drag each of our panels into its corresponding slot. Once that's done, let's return back to the script. Now we need to create some public functions to allow us to switch between panels. This is really simple, so just type in public void go to main. 
open and close some brackets and then inside curly braces, we need to change the active state of our different panels. To do this, type main panel dot set active, open some brackets. In here, it asks us to declare a boolean for whether the object is active or not. We want this to be active, so type true and add a semicolon. Next, we need to change the instructions panel. So I'll type instructions panel dot set active. This time we want it to be deactivated, so I'll type false. And I'll do the same thing for the options panel. To go to the instructions and options page, select the entire function and then copy it and paste it twice. I'll rename these to be go to instructions and go to options. Change the main panel dot set active to false in both of them, and then their respective panels active state to true. Finally, we need two more functions: public void on play clicked and public void quit game. When the play button is clicked, all we need to do is load the game scene, but for that we need to use Unity's scene management. So go back up to the top and under using Unity Engine, type using Unity Engine dot scene management. Now we can return back to the on play clicked function and type scene manager dot load scene. Open some brackets and in quotes type game scene. If your game scene is called something else, make sure you replace game scene with whatever it is called. Put on quit clicked. All we want to do for now is stop running the game. To do this, all we need to say is Unity Editor dot editor application dot is playing equals false. However, if we build the game, this won't work as we aren't running it in the editor anymore. So above that, I'm going to add hashtag if Unity underscore editor in all caps and then below it I'm going to add hashtag else and then application dot quit and finally end if what this does is check if we are running the game in the unity editor in which case it will stop the editor from playing if not we are running it in a build so it will call application dot quit which stops the app from running. With that done, we can now go back to the editor. Select all of our buttons, scroll down to the click events, hit the add sign, and drag and drop the main menu manager into the game object slot. For the function, open the drop down menu and go to main menu and select the function corresponding to each button. Currently, we don't actually have any way of getting back to the main page from the instructions or options, so I'm going to duplicate the quit button using Ctrl D, rename that to back button, and change the text to say back. I will also scroll down to the onclick events and change the function to go to main. I'll insert this as a child of the instructions panel, duplicate that once more, and put it under the options panel. The last thing we need to do before testing is add the scenes to the build settings to allow the scene manager to access them. To do this, go to File, Build Settings, select both of our scenes in the project and drag them into the top section. Now we should be all good to go. Hit play. Try the instructions page. That works. The options page. And finally try hitting play. And we can see that it takes us to our game scene. Let's exit playing for now. The instructions page is looking pretty empty right now, so I'm going to activate it. Right click UI Text Mesh Pro and rename this to Instructions. To it, I will add some instruction text. I will also go over to the Rep Transform and change its anchors by holding Alt and hitting the one in the bottom right corner to be full screen. I'm going to change the left and right properties to 20 to get some space from the edges and the top to 150 so that we have room for a title. For this, I'll go instructions panel, UI, 
TextMesh Pro. I will change the text to Instructions and the font size to 100. I will also change its colour just to something that stands out a little bit more. Finally, go back to the Rep Transform, hold Alt and hit the top right one. This will resize it to take up the full width of the screen at the top. I am also going to change its height to 150 and its position to minus 75. Finally, I will align it center both horizontally and vertically. I'll rename this to title, copy it, and paste it into the options panel. To this, I'll change the text to be options. I'm going to leave the rest of the options panel empty for now. That will be for the next video. Deactivate the instructions panel, and that should be it. So now we can test it, hit play, try the instructions page. That works. Try the options page. And finally, press quit. That's the end of this tutorial. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to smash like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.